Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. After the release of the almost legendary Metal Zone for Everything But Metal in Stereo episode, a lot of people asked me whether I planned to make an episode about more guitar-oriented gear. Of course, I'm happy to oblige. Undaunted by death and bad orthography, I stepped into the dungeons of online hate and started searching for gear that really pushes up the blood pressure of guitar players. Not an easy task as they are usually a friendly bunch who enjoy their gear with all its flaws and shortcomings. Nevertheless, I found two guitar amp series that seem to be an insult to the guitar playing population, Marshall MGs and Line 6 Spiders. Giving the bad gear treatment to only one of them would seem like an unjust act, so I started hunting for one of each. What I found are two practice amps with a similar set of features. The Marshall MG15FX and the Line 6 Spider 4. At the first glance, both amps seem to tick all the boxes. Although you probably don't want to play a Wembley Stadium gig with any of them, they offer a lot of features guitar players want and love. Multiple channels, a built-in FX unit with tap tempo and connectors for headphones and a foot switch. You can hook up a playback device for some backing tracks and both amps remember the settings when you switch sounds. So, why do people hate those amps like they feature Nickelback branded presets and a built-in smoke on the water generator? I'm not much of a guitar player, so I teamed up with guitar demigod Mutz, a highly sought after session player, musical director and lover of fine and expensive boutique gear. We met in the recording room of Plattenberg Studios, right here in my neighborhood of Fünfhaus, Vienna. You have already heard the two amps in our little intro tune. While Mutz played the Marshall, I had the honor of abusing the Line 6. For emulating the bit-crushed sound of the original recording, the Raspberry distortion of the Line 6 seems to be the right choice. I wanna know if the amps can handle some more complex riffs. <laughs> I'm not overly impressed with any of those tones. While the Line 6 sounds fizzy and compressed, the Marshall still has the signature tone of the brand buried somewhere and a sound that manages to sound scooped and honky at the same time. I really liked the delay of the Line 6 though. Let's listen to some clean sounds, solo and in a dance arrangement. The slightly artificial sounding clean channel of the Line 6 works pretty well compared to the Marshall, but the spider's rhythm sounds totally suck. It is notoriously difficult to get crunch sounds right, especially when using transistor and modeling amps. I wanna know if any of the two amps can nail an up-tempo rock and roll rhythm guitar. None of the amps would be my first choice on their own, but the combined sound of the two is pretty okay. Let's use it as a foundation for an effects laden lead sound. Verdict. Both amps are like the once catchy album of an artist you usually like to listen to. It shows some of the characteristics why you got into his or her music in the first place, but obviously something went mighty mighty wrong. While the Line 6 can be considered the Saint Anger of amps, I would say the Marshall is Van Halen 3. 
According to Mutz, the total lack of sustain and the weird dynamic response makes playing the amps harder than it should be. As I try to think positive, I would recommend using the Line 6 for your next industrial album. The Marshall still has the Marshall DNA at its core and makes you want to play real Marshalls. I just said the name three times, so their marketing team has obviously won. Thanks for watching, see you next time. If you enjoyed this episode, feel free to like and subscribe and don't forget to tell me in the comment section what other kind of bad gear you would like to see and hear on the show.